Hello and welcome back to my channel. I'm Courtney from Buckle Up Adventures. Thank you for following along on my cruise adventures with me. So I just got back literally from the Royal Caribbean Oasis of the Seas. And I just want to go over my experience with Royal Caribbean. This is my second Royal Caribbean uh, cruise. Um, the differences between Royal and Carnival during a pandemic. All right, so I did write myself some notes to go over certain things that I want, key points that I wanted to go over. So first off, the check-in process. We did have an 11 o'clock check-in time with Royal. And when we got to the cruise port, we did get there early because um, our hotel shuttle that was included in the price of our hotel, the shuttle was at 9 a.m. So we probably got to the um, port of Miami about 10. So... It was kind of unorganized at first because people were just in a line, just standing around. We didn't know exactly what to do. And then some of the workers uh, made different um, lines. So they had a 12 o'clock line, so a 12 to 12.30 check-in line, a 1 to 1.30 check-in line, uh, and then like, you know, so on, so on, different times. We were 11 o'clock. There was no 11 o'clock check-in time. So we're like, okay, where do we go? So the workers said, go in the 12 o'clock line. We're like okay, how does that make sense? You know, we have 11 o'clock, so we should be able to check in at 11 o'clock. And he's like, no, I'll just go into the 12 o'clock line, which we end up, you know, they actually end up letting the 12 o'clock people in at 11 o'clock with that um, time. But since I did have my son with me who is unvaccinated, so we, you know, we went in and we had a whole different process. So we had to go in, um, they gave us our band, which um this is a blue van it said the royal comeback and it's um basically let them know that you are vaccinated because you have the ban so then we had to go to the air testing area for the children and it was real fast um real easy so my, they um did the covid test on my son and then we had to go up to a waiting area and so they said they were going to email you the results. So everyone's up there and, you know, we're waiting. Like everyone's asking, did you get the email? Did you get the email? Nope, nope, nothing. So finally, one of the workers came up and she was like, five, five families have been approved. Five families have been approved. Check your emails. Everyone's checking their emails and still nothing. So finally, we went up to the desk where a lady was waiting. She had the results. So she was like, you didn't get them? No, we didn't get them. So she printed them out for us and you know he had his test results and when i got on the ship okay so that was let's say like 12 30 12 47 you know 12 something i checked my email i did not get the results email until 2 47 p.m so it was supposed to be 30 to 40 minutes which is weird okay so let's compare that to carnivals carnivals um check-in process was seamless it was just very easy very organized um they took the kids they tested him within 15 minutes we had the results boom bam right onto the cruise okay which okay it was it was no big deal we got on the cruise got to go get our lunch and everything um the COVID protocols so the differences between you know Royo is it, you know, it's very safe. You know, they followed excellent um, COVID protocols. But some of the things were kind of weird. Like, there would be unvax a chairs that would says unavailable. You know, so which, you know, they spaced out. So you had the chairs. In arcade, for instance, every other game was unavailable. Which is weird because they're different games. So if you wanted to play a certain game, but if you might not be able to because it was unavailable, but there might not be another game like that. So it was just kind of weird, but I understand. Um, what else was it with, as far as um, COVID protocols? The biggest difference with the uh, COVID protocols between Royal and Carnival is the whole vaccinated, non-vaccinated thing. So on Royal, they're definitely separating the vaccinated and with the the children unvaccinated the different shows the different um areas in the ship that children are not allowed it's just vaccinated only um the different 
pubs, the um, bars, which I understand because the kids shouldn't be in the bars anyway. But like the comedy show, um, my son likes going to the, you know, the PG comedy shows. And on Carnival, he was able to do that. On Royal, the comedy club was vaccinated only. And you also need a reservation for it. Uh, certain shows and certain show times that vaccinated had a certain times and those which would be everybody they had certain um times and if you went to the everyone show because the vaccinated people can still go to the show that's for everyone and but you get to sit up close the you know unvaccinated you're up high and you're off to the side of the shows so and then in between, they separate you. So if you're, per se, if you're vaccinated and you went to the show, like the ice show, for example, we went to, and on the unvaccinated side, everyone got to sit right next to each other, no spaces in between. On the, um, where the unvaccinated were, we had to have two seats in between each parties, and every other row was blocked off, which was cool. But that made it so that there wasn't a lot of seats. So there are a lot of people with their kids walking around trying to find seats and unavailable because they had to split the parties up because there wasn't enough seating just the way it was separated. It was fine for us, though, because it was just three of us in the party. Um, what else? You know, and basically just the, the main thing is just it wasn't a lot to do as far as like the trivia. We like going to the trivia and it was only vaccinated only uh karaoke vaccinated only so it was just you know it was like a separation of, of what you could and cannot do with a child but i mean i'm not complaining i understand everything uh the kids club so royal caribbean their kids club is open and running you could go drop your kid off at the kid club they had certain times uh, no reservation just walk on in and um which my son for some reason does not like the kids club so can never just drop them off there but what I thought was really cool is that on the port days you could drop your kid off at the kids club and if you had a Royal Caribbean excursion booked then you had priority you had could make a reservation and drop your kid off during those times and it came first come first serve so if you didn't have a excursion booked the Royal you still could drop your kid off you just have to go get walk in and make sure there was availability so that was cool so i could have gotten off the ship in Nassau if my son wanted to go to the kids club which he didn't so i didn't even worry about it and i've been in Nassau many times um let's see with um where are we at okay sorry i'm trying to look at my notes and make sure i get all the key points uh the kids club okay and now okay the shows royal caribbean has great entertainment like top-notch entertainment so if you're on royal caribbean make sure you go to the shows the first show was um a juggling act but they were uh second place america's got talent they've been on the white house all over on tv and they were great i think they were called passing time so they were really good that's perfect show um cats okay so my mom my son did not like cats and it did have a technical difficulties so we didn't get to finish it for me it was okay because i kind of like broadway and musical musical so it's like if you like that type of thing you might like that show um but the aqua 80 show was like hands down the best cruise show that i've seen it was amazing like all those entertainers are so talented they had type roping um diving like olympic divers like legit some of these divers were on the olympics and they were um diving the you know the whole um aspect of that show and like everything it takes to do that show because the water went up and down and closed off and you could dive and dance on the same like platform it was crazy the show was so good the music the dancing like i don't know i'm not gonna keep saying it but that was a good show so if you have a chance to see that show definitely go see that show um so compared to carnival carnival production shows can be hit or miss like i did say that on the sunrise 
it was like the best shows that I've seen on Carnival and they stepped their game up. But it's nothing, nothing like Royal Caribbean's. Okay. Um, the cruise director. So on Royal Caribbean, I literally seen the cruise director two times. Two times. During the whole four day cruise. Two times. This cruise director was non-existent. The only way I seen the cruise director on the first night of the first show, he opened up the show. Then on the last night, he closed up the show of the um, Frozen show, which the ice show, I forgot to say when I was mentioning the shows, it was awesome too. A great show. They always do a good ice show. Because, um, you know, on Carnival, the cruise director is a big deal. You walk around, a cruise director is the life of the party. They, you know, get the party lit. They're everywhere on the pool deck you know i seen um who is my uh felipe was that who my last cruise director was i seen him everywhere when i had simon i seen him everywhere on the pool deck everywhere no dennis was the name of this cruise director legit he was never walking around the ship if he was i never seen him um other people were like is there a cruise director yeah somewhere so um the cruise director it must just not be a big thing on Royal. And I'm trying to remember. And maybe that's why I don't remember who my cruise director of the Mariner of the Seas was. Because I don't remember. <laughs> so, um, yeah, if you're, like, into cruise directors and you want to know who the cruise director is. And you're going on Oasis of the Sea, don't even worry about it. Because you will not see him. He will not be a part of the cruise. Let's put it like that. All right. So, the rooms. Um, our room was pretty big. We did have a um ocean view. Um, we had a good um st stateroom steward. Um, and the difference, like Carnival, they ask you, do you want you know morning um service or evening service on Royal? They don't ask you. They just do both. And I noticed they say um you know hang your towels up there, conserve energy. No, it didn't matter if our towels were hung or whatever. He always replaced the towels. And the room was clean. He did an excellent job. His name was Michael Douglas. <laughs> but the thing is, like, what we like on the cruise, my son, we like seeing the, the tow animals. We got one tow animal the whole time. It was a cute, though. It was a, my favorite animal, a frog. But we didn't get the night, you know, the nightly um, tow animals. And when we were on the sunrise, every night we got a, a tow animal. And, you know, that's part of a cruise. And, like, some people are like, ah, I don't care about a towel, a towel animal. But for a kid, if you have a kid on your cruise, they kind of look forward to that. And it's just a nice touch, you know. It's something we normally get on a cruise that we didn't get. But it's, it's totally not a big deal at all. I'm just, you know, some, a difference that, something I noticed, the difference between Carnival and uh, Royal. Um, the food. So, um, Royal Caribbean, to me. I mean, it just had, they just had better food to me, to me on Carnival than Carnival. But my last cruise with Carnival, the food was not bad at all. You know, there was something that we liked. Um, so what I do like, it went on a cruise. I like having my time dining or your time dining, whatever you want to call it. Um, freestyle dining if you're in NCL. But I like to choose. I don't like being put in a time because... They had, you know, the 5.30 is the early dinner. And then you have the 8 o'clock dinner time for the late times. But then you have shows at 7 and shows at 8. So it's like, you kind of want to just go when you're ready to go. We could not do that on Royal. On Carnival, we were able to pick my time dining, go as we please. No. Royal, if you have someone who's unvaccinated, if you have a child, you have to pick early or late dinner. And when we got on the ship, they assigned us late dinner and it was eight o'clock. We don't eat at eight o'clock at my house. We just don't. It's late for us. Um, we're like six o'clock, you know, five thirty, you know, six o'clock, six thirty is good for us. So the late was just too late for us. And plus, I could I would miss some of the shows because the unvaccinated had certain show times. So we went with the early dining and we had you know a certain floor it was deck deck four we had to um, have our table at which was fine we had a fabulous um wait staff fabulous 
Uh, we had Sue, we had Galvin and Paramajet. They were awesome. And they were also, the whole dining crew on the Oasis were um, the top dining crew on the whole fleet of Royal Caribbean. So it was great. They were very attentive and they took care of all our needs. Like Sue, she just cut up, my son had ordered a steak. She cut it up for him. Um, you know, they did, they just took very good care of us. So if you do get them, they're amazing. So that was the difference between the, you know, the food. Oh, and also for the buffet, for some reason, like I read some vlogs that said the Windjammer wasn't open at dinner time. And I guess I just never went back to check to see if that was true or if they changed it. And so the whole time I'm thinking, oh, we got to eat every night at the main dining room. And we walk, haven't just walked past at dinner time and seen people eating at the Windjammer. So the Windjammer is open at dinner, but I guess you have to make reservations for that. And then every time you go to the Windjammer for breakfast, lunch, whatever, you do have to sign in with your card. And then when you come out, you have to um, sign out. I guess it's just their way of tracking. They said for contact track uh, tracing and just the numbers, just knowing how many people were in there at one time. So that's understandable. All right, so that's the food. Okay, let's see. Room service, another part of food. You know, uh, with Carnival, room service, of course, breakfast is free. Room service is free on Carnival, except for, like, maybe starting at 10 or 11 o'clock at night. And then they have a surcharge. But uh, Royal, only the breakfast and only the Continental, the cold stuff, is um, free. And if you want anything besides breakfast at any time of the night, there's a $7.95 um, $7 service charge. So just in case, if you wanted something... It's kind of not worth it because you could just go to the Royal Promenade or the Park Cafe or uh, Sorrento's and just pick something up real quick instead of paying $8 unless you just need something delivered. Okay, so I talked about the entertainment, the crowd level. So since the pandemic, even when I was on Carnival, the crowd level, you know, the ship was not at capacity and it was, you know... It was great because there's no lines for anything. You don't have to wait. With uh, Royal, I'm being on the Oasis of the Seas, it's a huge, it's a mega ship, basically. They said it was like, I heard there was 3,200 people. That's what I heard, like from a Facebook group. So I don't know if that's accurate, but it, it was empty. There was time that there was no one at the pool deck. And for that big of a ship, for it to be like empty is amazing. Um, there... It was just, it was great because you could do anything you wanted to do with short lines and everything. Like in a dining room, in and out in one hour. The last time I was on Royal and I ate at the dining room, it was like two hours. And that's the reason why I didn't go back to the dining room because it was so long. But no, we were in and out in an hour. It was just not a lot of people. The crowd level was great. So you never felt crowded at all. Okay, so that's basically everything else and then the last thing i wanted to talk about to um compare is the disembarkment process so with carnival the um process you know the same process put your bags out and by 11 o'clock or 10 o'clock at night they take um and then when it's time to get off the ship what do we do we basically just um we waited around up wherever you were at. we were at the um pool deck we waited around for them to call our number and we got off the ship Royal, they weren't calling numbers over the loudspeaker. What you had to do was you go eat breakfast at a certain time, you go back to your room and you wait and turn your channel. Your TV channel was like channel two and it lists all the um tag numbers. We were tag number 41 because we wanted a later um time to get off, you know, the 8.50, the nine o'clock time. So we went, you had to watch your TV screen and see when your number, your tag number was up there and it would say, uh, wait in, wait in, wait in, and it was say, or it was like now call in and go to uh, deck five or whatever. So we had to do that. Um, so basically the process was basically about the same, but the really cool thing about Royal Caribbean and getting off the ship is literally you got in line, you got your bag, which that's a whole nother story because we're tag number 41. 
went to the number 41 spot. My mom's bag was there. My son's bag. I'm like, where the heck is my bag at? You know, I'm freaking out. Like, they done stole my bag. Someone got my bag. It's lost. What am I going to do? So, I found the um, employee. And I'm like, you know, I can't find my bag. And she was like, oh, I'll take you to where it might, probably would be where the other bags are. And I see my bag, but it had someone else's tag on it. Not the tag that I put on my bag. It was someone else's tag, someone else's name. And it was on my bag. So I'm like, what the hell? Like, how? Okay, whatever. So I made sure all my stuff was right. But I just don't understand how did my tag fall off and they found someone else's tag and they put that on my bag. It was just weird. I don't know. But it wasn't a big deal. It was just strange. <laughs> so anyways, you grab your bags and then you walk out. So normally, I remember, like, I don't know when you used to have to like write how much you bought on a ship and answer like a health questionnaire or do answer some paperwork or whatever on your way out i don't i don't remember doing that on uh, my last carnival i don't remember but i remember we had to show our uh passports you know and get out with royal what was really cool they had like these screens face identification so you just go up to the little um screen thing pull your mask down you know look at it and it would beep and you just walk out. There was no going to see the officer and showing your um passports or birth certificates or whatever you have. No, you just did the face recognition thing and you were done. We literally disembarked in like, I want to say 10 minutes. It probably would have been like seven minutes if I didn't have to find my bag. But it was like the quickest disembarking um, time. So that was that was really cool. But really, that's um the main um differences and just the key points that I wanted to touch on between the Royal and Carnival during the pandemic. So if you do have any questions, especially um, if you're traveling with children, uh, please let me know because I can answer any of those questions. Oh, and I know a big thing that I did forget um, when I was talking about the uh, COVID testing for the children. With Carnival, we did have to have a PCR test for my son three days prior to um, the sailing. And then when we got there, we got tested again. And he also got tested like the second to last day. That's because we were on a five-day cruise. But with Royal, you don't have to, it could be a PCR or an antigen, you know, a rapid test. Which was really cool because the rapid test, you get the results fast. And um, you don't have to wait because the PCR could take a day, it could take two days. It's just, you just don't know what the PCR so I thought that was really good that you got to get the antigen test and that was the only test he had to get um, and then we got the other test when we got there and the big difference I don't know how I forgot this with carnival with the kids testing they charge $150 per kid $150 for their testing royal the testing was included it was free which that was good I'm like, I'm just forgetting stuff. I didn't write on my list or I just didn't read it. Another big difference if you're traveling with kids is for getting off the ship with uh, Carnival, you had to purchase the bubble tours. And it was only like one or two at each port. So you had to choose from those two different things. Or, you know, your children can't get off the ship. With Royal, for your child to get off the ship, you could purchase any Royal Caribbean crew, um cruise um excursion it just had to be purchased through a uh, royal and they could get off there wasn't no bubble tours where you're isolated with only unvaccinated people no you can get on they could take any uh royal caribbean cruise excursion to get off so that was pretty cool we just didn't do that and then when you go to the um private islands you they could get off because it was royals island and that's the same i think as well with carnival so those i just wanted to make sure i added those in because that's important Although this information is going to be changing because of the um, 5 to 11 year old vaccination. But just if you're traveling before everything changed, that's good information to know. All right. So I'm sorry if I'm talking fast. I know some people tell me I do talk fast, but it's just the way I talk. So hopefully you can understand everything. Hopefully I answer some questions that you may have about the difference between Royal Caribbean right now and Royal um, Carnival or just some of the COVID uh, protocols and, you know, with the, uh, with the um, children and the unvaccination, unvaccinated, because, you know, it's just a different process with the cruise line. Even with Carnival, like I had a um, 
submit um exemption uh, form for my son with royal we didn't have to worry about any exemption like the kid if they were booked they got to go on a cruise you didn't have to wait with carnival it was like two weeks before you didn't even know if you got approved for the exemption like i had a like last minute waiting to buy my plane tickets waiting to get the airport because i'm like do i want to book this now and possibility of him not getting the exemption but i went ahead and bit the bullet and just purchased everything but there's people that purchased it you know they're everything and they didn't get the exemption for the kids but with royal you don't have to worry about the exemptions because if they're on if you bought the cruise for them they can go on but like I said, all that would be changing soon because everything is just changing. You know, every day is something different with the whole COVID thing. So thanks for watching. I hope this information will be useful for some of you parents or, you know, whoever out there cruising. So please make sure if you have not subscribed, please go ahead and subscribe. And do you guys see my shirt? My, um, it's my hoodie, but it has me on it. It's, uh, I got my youtube logo and everything it's youtube name and my cousin made it for me so i thought i would wear it why i did this video because it's really cool so make sure you subscribe to buckle adventures and see you guys later because our next cruise will be in february on the carnival conquest